Hey, good people, Batavia here. A lot to cover, but first, big thank yous to those who like, watch, comment, share, and subscribe to Be Better Garden. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, consider it. It's a button below. We have harvesting. We're going to do some watering of some containers. We're going to plant in some containers. We're also going to do some maintenance on a few summer things. All right, let's dig in. A quick update on my broccoli plants. I waited one day too late for a few of these heads. You can see here where those yellow or brown bits are the sign that the plant is starting to wrap up its life cycle. So those are still edible, um, but it doesn't have much longer before it completely starts to bolt. You really want the broccoli head to be firm and green. Good morning. Firm and green like you see in the stores. Um, the shade of green may vary, but you know, you can also see where this head has started to separate just a little bit. This head is a little bit more firm and compact. This is more ideal. Um, so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna harvest all of the broccoli heads and leave the plants in place for just a little while longer. We're gonna see if they produce a few more shoots. Um, so if they actually produce even the smaller heads, it'll be worth leaving them in place for maybe another week or so. We'll see what they do there. One other thing to note, so one of the popular comments for broccoli plants is leaves are edible. Absolutely they are. It's kind of hard to tell here, but these are two different shades of grain. These are younger leaves, uh, more tender. These are your older leaves, and these would be more tough. I've actually cooked up both broccoli leaves and cauliflower plant leaves before in my traditional kind of this is how I cook my southern collards and boy did it take a long time for those greens to kind of cook down and, and become tender they never got to the point like my collards do um, so my thought is I'll probably come in and clip a couple of these leaves and just cook them up and see what happens and if so I'll come back and just get these younger leaves before I pull the plant yeah that's what I got I'm going to take the cover off here and I have it pretty snug um, because of the way this is set up. I don't want the cabbage moth to be able to kind of crawl underneath the cover. So I have it tucked in and the bags, the grow bags are really close together. I'm going to do my watering. These look beautiful. So these are three of the Morris Head cabbage collards. This is supposed to be squash, so I've sowed this twice. First yellow squash that didn't come up, now I'm doing the early scallop, so we'll see. This is a gray zucchini. This is really small for how big this plant could get. However, we're going to see how it does. I only have it covered because of the potential of a squash vine borer. Um, so for watering, so regular watering would be like a 10 count. Right, and then I'll come back and see if water has started to escape from the bottom. Then I know I feel like I've watered it enough. In this case, I'm going to do like a five count. And then I'm going to come back around with my watering can because I have some fertilizer in here. This is the fish and seaweed uh, fertilizer. And so anytime I see these, um, I pull the leaves off. I haven't had it run rampant in my garden, uh, but it is a problem if it does. So I'm going to just throw this leaf away. And this is row cover. Um, it's 85% light transmission. This is really not designed for this kind of time of year. This is more of like for protecting crops when the weather gets cooler or before the weather gets warmer. But this is what I ordered for that purpose. And so now I'm also using it to keep the cabbage worm off of the plants. Um, keeping the cabbage moth off of the plants, which in turn uh, should prevent them from laying eggs that will lead to the cabbage worm. So these look untouched. These are probably the healthiest greens in my garden. So we are going to do some early season tomato plant maintenance. So what I was coming in today to do was to tie up some of my tomato plants. This is one that has succumbed to the wind that we've had more recently. And I also want to go ahead and prune some suckers. I already have a couple of plants that are getting away from me. Um, so I wanna make sure I do that. But I also found some trouble that I need to take action on. By the way, so far while this cage has been set up to prevent 
squirrels from actually eating the ripe tomatoes once we get there. Uh, one of the things I try to keep in mind when we build out stuff like this in the garden is how easy is it to get in and out of. And so far, so good. This has been super easy to basically get in, maintain things, and basically bundle it back up. So this is our trouble here. Peel bugs, roly polies, uh, whichever way you prefer to call them, they are going to town on some of my plants. And so I've had trouble with them over recent years. And this season in particular, they've been eating a lot of the things I've direct sowed once they germinate. And so I've had to re-sow. I'll ultimately need to change my method when it comes to some of these uh, vegetables that I'm trying to grow, some of the melons as well. But for this, before I start to stake things up, which generally I wanted to work, wait until the dew dries, I need to take care of these leaves immediately. So a part of what I'm gonna do this season, which I do every season, by the time these tomato plants grow up, these leaves won't even be on the plant. So I'll prune probably the lower eight inches to 12 inches of the plant just to promote better health for the tomato plants but you have to wait until the plants get some size on them to do that and you don't want to be too aggressive with it um, so we definitely do want to start that effort because these lower leaves are coming in contact with the soil with the mulch and these peel bugs are having a feast so that's what we're going to do this morning um, right now i'm going to go ahead and, and try to capture as many of these as i can and then cut these lower leaves but I'll again wait for the rest to kind of dry up a bit. Everything looks healthy now, but just as a habit, you know, I, I try to minimize how much I work with wet plants um, and going plant to plant. You know, I just don't want to promote disease or pass disease from one plant to another. Quick update on our first long bed in the front yard garden. This bed sits at 10 feet by three and a half feet wide. It's been two weeks since we were in this bed with our broccoli, so I want to give y'all an update on the plants. But real quick, check out the cabbage. I just love it. We've entered June, but I've been able to grow cabbage through the summer in my area. They're beautiful. They are starting to form heads. And it's so great because they have only been covered with this insect netting. Um, I have terrible trouble with the cabbage worm, you know, the white butterfly, the white moth, laying eggs, cabbage worms, then eating up my leaves. And I did this in the backyard last year where I only used this netting and the plants generally were unbothered. So I took a chance again this year and it's worked out well for these plants. Um, it was a different story for the cabbage that I had planted in that narrow bed. So I did come back, you know, once I realized there was so much damage for those plants and cover those with tool fabric and actually ended up pulling the plants that were on either side. Uh, but we're here for broccoli. When I cut the plants out, I cut them on an angle to make sure that water didn't pool here. I did cut out those leaves when you saw them in the bowl. I did cook those up and I'm going to actually cut up these and take these into the kitchen as well the younger ones the ones that are on the inner side of the plant which you wouldn't normally kind of harvest from the inside um, but since i knew i was pulling the plant i was fine with that they did cook down and they got tender much faster than the previous experience so i am convinced last time i did harvest older leaves um, which were tougher so these were definitely more tender now my baseline is going to be collard greens you know a lot of y'all know those are my jam and so the taste was different um, I still I cooked them up I uh, added some cornbread and enjoyed a bowl we're actually going to cut out all of these and so when we're trying to get the most out of our plants this is a great way to do so this is a good view of a plant bolting so this is broccoli bolting you can see that stalk bolting up okay duck so shoots and leaves shoots and ladders. All right, we have a heaping handful of greens. If you've ever cooked down greens, you know this is actually not a lot, but it's enough for one person and I'm one person, right? So I think I'm gonna try these with, you know, kind of cooking them down and adding some coconut milk. I've done that before and it's pretty tasty. We'll just pan saute these. These are the shoots that started to bolt. So I wanna eat these first. I'll add these to lunch today. And so it's just a handful enough for like one side. And then the winner, winner, the side shoots. 
this is the actual bowl that I had the heads of broccoli in. And I'm uber pleased. We got some really nice size side shoots, right? Uh, some of them are a little small, but all in all, these are young and tender, and these are gonna make for a great treat. My favorite way to eat broccoli is like it may be, all right, it's my favorite. It's to roast them, so spread them out, um, coat them with a little bit of oil. Olive oil is a great addition. Salt and pepper, maybe a little bit of garlic powder, and roast them at like 400, 10, 12 minutes. And keeping the leaves on, these crisp up in that time really nicely. Uh, but yeah, that's what I got. We have a quick garlic scape harvest from our hard neck garlic. So on the right side is our soft neck garlic, a chilium red. This is our hard neck garlic. And I'm hoping, uh, yeah, I waited too long for this. I can tell just based on they're not breaking easily. And you can see how they have now, they kind of need to be peeled. Um, so this is going to be far too chewy to be enjoyable. Now the goal for me to harvest these is to prevent them from producing a flower. Kind of the energy of the growing goes into producing the flower rather than going into producing larger bulbs. Sometimes you put things off and you pay the price for it. Okay, so I've been eating the scape out of this bed. Um, so... These are going to be a bit more tender, but I should have gotten all of these a week ago. Whenever I started eating them, I really should have got them. And if you hear disappointment in my voice, it is because I am disappointed. I do better. I wanted to film this and I put it off and uh, here we are. You know, so this is the bowl of the music. And you can see this is one of those cases where bigger doesn't always mean better. So these are much larger, um, but they're definitely gonna be tougher. Here is an example of one that looks younger and the snap is much more quick, right? Again, still a bit more string there, uh, but much more enjoyable. And so this will probably end up being pesto. And where's one of the ones that I broke off here? So this is one of the ones I broke Yeah, this is almost like <laughs> so I wouldn't want to eat that entire thing um, just because you know it's it's chewy I mean that's the bottom line of it so this is the second year I've done this waited a little bit too long um, third year is going to be the charm. I'm going to get these out of the garden, harvest these, and make great use of them next year. That's my vow. But we're going to try to use what we can for the ones that we do have. And then we'll look forward to our garlic harvest.